So moving on then to the second talk of our day, it gives me great pleasure to present um, our next speaker, Mark Oliver. Now, Mark is a teacher at the British Council Singapore. He has taught English in Japan, Brazil, Australia, the UK, Lebanon, Sri Lanka, Borneo, Thailand, and Portugal. Mark's the author of two novels, two graded readers, an essay writing guide, and the teacher resource book, Text Chat Activities. He also hosts the English Chat podcast on SoundCloud and iTunes. And you can find out more about Mark and his work at markjoliver.co.uk or follow him at Text Chat Teacher on Twitter. So, yes, absolutely, Cheryl, lots of places. Mark, the global traveler. So, handing over to Mark and over to you. Thank you. Uh, thanks, David. Can you hear me clearly? Yes, yes. Yep, loud and clear. Okay, yep. great. Thank you for the introduction. Uh, so, today I'm going to talk about uh, text chat in secondary classes. So, uh, uh, this subject was the focus of my uh, master's dissertation uh, about four years ago. Uh, I was interested in this subject because uh, this was how I uh, began my studies in Portuguese before I moved to Brazil uh, way way back in the day. Uh, since initiating my masters, uh, I thought I'd try to make the my findings more relevant to English teachers. So I wrote a resource book, uh, so uh, which has uh, lots of lesson ideas about how to use text chat in class. Which some of them I'm going to talk about in this uh, little presentation. So first, I'll move on and I'll tell you about the benefits of using text chat. Uh, with learners and some potential problems. Uh, and I'll also show you a, a safe place uh, where you can use it with your students. And also I'll look at some activities you can do and also uh, I'll, uh, I'll uh, show you some feedback from some of the students I use this with. So let's look at what text chat is. So text chat is something you all use in your day-to-day -day life and it's something that students all use. Uh, it's basically a real-time conversation performed using an instant messaging program. Uh, the most common ones are Facebook Messenger, WhatsApp, Gmail. So if you have a look at a few conversations there. So interestingly, the use of language practice in a text chat environment brings a lot of benefits. Let's go through them one by one. The first benefit is that it's authentic and motivating. Uh, students are already doing this in their day-to-day -day lives, uh, also they're doing it in their own language and probably in English too. So in, in that way it's authentic communication, uh, you know, it's going to continue to be the case and you know, maybe more so in the future. Uh, because it's real uh, and students do it, use it in their day-to-day, -day, it's motivating for them to practice in class. Uh, you know, a lot of times students are distracted by their own phone, but if you can incorporate that technology into the class, then that's a very motivating thing. Now. A lot of the benefits uh, relate to the fact that uh, text chat provides a visual record of the ongoing conversation. Basically, when you're having the chat, you can see what each, each uh, what the speaker is saying, and this results in a number of benefits. Uh, first, the fact that you can see the language uh, that you're using, you know, means there's greater noticing of language. So remember, noticing and um, has been obviously one of the first steps of language acquisition. Uh, also, there's greater noticing of corrective feedback when provided from teachers or their partners. And there's also uh, a lot more self-correction. And now this noticing of corrective feedback is important because it, it uh, draws the learner's attention to the fact that they've made a mistake and that their interlanguage uh, isn't quite there yet. So uh, this example of negative evidence is important for uh, language acquisition. And, uh, and the benefit of uh, doing this kind of activity is that when you're when you're doing this activity in for the class, uh, you have all of the, the chats in front of you, you can actually provide feedback uh, to everybody at the same time, which is impossible, you know, in, in, in normal face-to-face uh, -face communication. You can't be everywhere around the class at one time. 
So this feedback feature is a very, very useful uh, part of text chat. Uh, another a uh, small benefit stems from the fact that there's slower turn taking. So when people talk face to face, it's very quick, and people don't have much time to think about what they're going to say. But because text chat is, uh, you know, using the keyboard, you, you have that extra time to think about what you're going to say, to prep up what you're going to say, uh, a little bit, so you can go at your own pace. And this this has been shown to result in a greater quality and quantity of the language produced. Students are thinking a bit more about what they're going to write, so that so that. The push output there is really making them focus their attention on uh, their attention on uh, uh, on the language being produced. Okay. Uh, also, the fact that it's anonymous uh, means that there's a lot there's greater participation, and uh, this is important for shy students. So students who sometimes might not want to uh, participate in spoken spoken. Uh, uh, activities, they're much more, more likely to uh, participate because they're, it, it's anonymous. Also, because uh, their partner requires them to plug their responses, you know, they don't have the option to opt out because you know the other students they're, they're pushed to uh, at least uh, reply to something. Uh, also, there there's more L1 students. Not in, in the time, all the times I've used it, students have never reverted to their own language. It's natural just to have the conversation in English. And finally, uh, it provides an enduring record of conversation. The teacher can save the conversations and come back to them and use them in classes. And I'll, I'll look at uh, ways that teachers can do that later. As you can see at the bottom the, from the sources, uh, this kind of this research it isn't isn't new. It's been around in second language acquisition for many years, but there hasn't been that much of a you know, uh, you know follow through into the actual classroom classroom usage. So, now, let's look at some potential problems. First, slow typing or responses can frustrate partners. So, if somebody's particularly slow at typing, or maybe the level isn't quite there, uh, it can frustrate uh, their partners. So, here it's important when you're assigning pairs to think about people that may be at the same level, uh, or, or just, or, you know, the slow typing will, you know, won't be a problem if you're using this more regularly. Uh, also, students may make mistakes due to typing, not language ability. But I think that's okay. I mean, uh, that's natural. But uh, I mean, if you're giving feedback on the language, then you should be aware that if it's a language mistake or is it just a typo. Uh, finally, to, uh, also, some students might be frustrated that they're they're not speaking. They think it's, maybe it's a waste of time because you know they're they're not they're not practicing their pronunciation or their fluency. But actually, research has shown that uh, text chat acts as a uh, Conversation simulator, so it actually that has, has been shown to show improve speaking skills. Uh, even though you're not orally speaking, that you're using the same sort of strategies, uh, and it actually has been shown to have a positive effect. So if you make this clear to students, then they're more more likely to be on site. But again, uh, with secondary students, I've never had a problem. They're all very keen to do this. Uh, there was one, some problems. You might maybe the students didn't take this class seriously. But again, uh, if you Make them aware that you, you're actually watching all of the conversations. Then uh, what's going on? They're, they're aware that, that you're you're there monitoring them. So uh, you know, generally, students do participate fully. Uh, now, child protection issues. Uh, you know, you know, working in the British Council has got very strict child protection policy. So you know, it's impossible to have students share their Facebook or their uh, WhatsApp address. Uh, and it, it, for a while, I was a bit confused about how I could actually use this with secondary. Uh, Students. But then I realized there's an excellent website where you, the teacher has full control over, over the windows and they're only open for a limited time. And this website is called Today's Meet. And uh, it's free. And the only person who needs to create an account is the teacher. Uh, so they create an account. And then, uh, and then what they do on their account, they can open a new room and they pick the name. And then they keep the open. They can choose to keep the room open for uh, one hour or two hours, and after that, it's gone. So people can't access it again. Uh, so you would click uh, who can join anyone. Then what will happen is you will have this address. For example, here I've got todaysmeet.com/pair1. And then whether once you give the students that email address, they put it onto uh, into their browser, and it will be taken straight away to the chat room. And 
the first page thing they will see will, will be nicknames. So they just basically type their name in there, click join or hit return, and then they have the conversation. Now, uh, unlike WhatsApp or uh, or Facebook Messenger, or indeed any others, the conversation goes upwards rather than downwards, so it's going up. Now, this is a great website because the teacher can say, for example, there's 10 students, you can put them into five pairs, and the teacher on his computer in front of class uh, can have open up five browsers and look at the five different conversations, and then you can just alt, alt tab and flip between the conversations. And then again, after after one hour, it's gone. So people can't access. Students don't need to uh, don't need to give their private emails, and also teachers don't need to hand over their Facebook address. So again, it solves that problem. It's a very, very useful resource. It's free, but you can pay extra, and then you you get to keep uh, you get access to uh, the previous conversations which you can use. So yeah. Uh, this is what conversation looks like. So as you can see, it's moving upwards rather than downwards. Uh, again, you know, we just tell students that at the beginning of the activity, it's not really an issue. So, now, let's have a look at some activities that I've used. Uh, generally, what, what I like to do is uh, I like to just use traditional communicative tasks, but I just adapt it to, uh, to a text chat environment. So, for example, here you've got uh, an activity from the Cambridge resource book, and basically students take it in terms to interview each other. Now, what I would normally do, I'd have a sort of blended learning approach, where the first stage, I would put students in pairs and say, OK, I want you together to brainstorm some questions, and then the other half of the class, they would uh, imagine you're applying this job, what are your skills, and then after I'd be prepared the sentences there uh, in just normal face-to-face uh, -face sort of communication, then I would put them into, uh, give, them, give them an iPad or put them on a computer, and then they would carry out the interview uh, using text chat. So it's a combination of both. Uh, and uh, yeah, normally I would also sit the, the partners in the pair on different sides of the room, so there's no chance of their speaking, so it's all done through the, through the text chat. Uh, another activity I've used is half a crossword, classic, for, uh, for good for relative clauses and good for recycling vocabulary. Uh, again, you can do this two ways. You can either have to split the group uh, beforehand and have A's work together to think of, defi uh, think of definite clues for their words and B think of clues for their words and then put them on a computer. Or if they're quite high level, maybe you can just do it spontaneously so uh, so they can uh, uh, they don't have time to write beforehand. I mean, it depends on the level of the students. Uh, again, another good activity is interview with a star. So again. One student imagines they're in a band, the other student imagines they're a journalist, and then they just carry the interview out uh, using text chat. Uh, information gaps work very well with this. Uh, so again, uh, one student has a text, and one student has an incomplete text, and then they have to take it in turn to uh, ask questions about it. So again, any, any, any type of activity where there's an information gap, uh, it's very, very useful. Now, uh, I, I've used text chat with all different levels. I mean, it's I've used it with beginners and I've used it with advanced. So again, all, all, all. It, I mean, in some ways, it's actually very, it's better for the lower levels because you know, if you're a beginner or elementary, sometimes when in the speaking activities, you might only, you might when you're observing students, they might only give one word answers. But because it's in a text chat environment, you have that little bit extra time to. Uh, to think about what they're going to say, and uh, and then also if you're providing feedback, they can see some correct answers. And also, they get if their students at a slightly higher level, they can see their students' uh, questions. And and then because they're seeing the language, it, it makes it uh, more likely that they're going to be using it as well. Now, group activities. Again, you can you can uh, create a tech, uh, today's meet window for a group group of students, uh, three or four, and uh, you can do a, a range of activities. Uh, one activity I like to do for, uh, uh, usually I'll do this maybe the week before I do uh, a, a for and against essay uh, lesson. Uh, then you have a debate and one team they agree with uh, a subject, for example, should mobile phones be banned from school, and then the others disagree, and then uh, maybe beforehand, before you put them on the text, 
picks up, they formulate their ideas, and then and then you put them onto the picture. Uh, maybe on the board you might have some scaffolding as well, uh, some useful language which, which they can use. Uh, another activity which I quite like, uh, also incorporating a range of uh, digital literacy skills uh, is basically uh, you say to the class they've got a class trip and they get to choose the destination. Now before you carry out the text chats, you split them up into uh, into different groups and each group visits uh, a different website uh, and then they, they uh, gather some information from that website and after they've got the information uh, then they you put you split them up and you give them all an iPad and one person who visited the England website and one person who visited the world website they they get together with students so they've all they've all uh, seen different things and then they're using their you know using their what they the information they've got from those websites to have this uh, debate and discussion about uh, which destination they should go on so. Uh, Again, you know, uh, you can put useful language up on the board, and then uh, then afterwards you could have bring it back to uh, this a traditional classroom where okay, students are then present, sort of discuss to the group what what which place they decided. So you, you here you're sort of switching back and forth between using the text chat and then the traditional uh, just uh, uh, you know uh, oral uh, activities. Uh, uh, this. Uh, this works quite well also with group activities where they have to select the best candidates from the list. For example, choosing astronauts for a mission to Mars, or choosing flatmates, or uh, matching candidates to different jobs. Uh, I mean, I, I've used this activity with the uh, the Mars the Mars One uh, mission. There's a website called Mars One, and uh, and uh, suppose they get to watch it off the through the Mars One website, read about it, and then they can uh, then they can uh, begin their debate. So for a lot of these, that you're doing quite a bit of work before they get to the text chat stage. They they talk about the holistic characteristics, and yeah, so uh, yeah, so find that very engaging. Now, what role does the teacher play in these activities? So it depends. Uh, so for example, if if you're teaching a student one to one, then you might actually be the participant. You might actually be doing the the uh, the activity with them, for example, uh, they need to spot the difference picture, and you've got one picture, they've got another, and, and you're comparing it. So in that case, you're the participant. If you're in a group class, you might just be a facilitator and silent observer. So maybe you're just looking in and answering any questions that students direct, then noticing if students aren't sure what they're doing. Uh, sometimes there's little glitches. There's little glitches in the uh, system, so you might need to have to like just go and double check everything's okay. Uh, then you might actually do that. Uh, look at some of the common errors being made, right? And jot them down. And then maybe after the activity, you can bring students' attention to it, or just use that information as kind of a, a neat analysis. Uh, finally, this is the this third role, and this is the role that I normally, I, I always. Uh, uh, fulfill when I'm when I'm doing this kind of activity. That's facilitator and instant feedback provider. So you're watching. You've got uh, in your computer screen. You say there's ten students. You've got five conversations. They're all up there, uh, and you're basically just going through, following the conversations as they're happening. And when you see an error uh, that you think uh, would be useful to respond to, then you would just type in some feedback or uh, yeah, type some feedback now. Uh, so that they're getting some instant instant response to the language. Uh, now the feedback you use, I mean, just like in the classroom, you can decide: Are you going to use a recast? Are you going to reformulate their mistake? Or are you going to say, okay, uh, you know, there's a mistake here. Can you work it out? Or are you going to uh, are you going to uh, just give some explicit feedback? Now, uh, my master's dissertation was focusing on learner noticing of uh, of one type of corrective feedback. Uh, uh, provided during uh, a text chat activity, and uh, I, I created a, a new kind of, uh, uh, of feedback, and I called it a hybrid recast. So if you have a look at the example, uh, so student A and B are having a conversation. Uh, what did Sally do yesterday, student B? She played tennis with her friend. And the teacher drops in some uh, hybrid recast. She played, and brackets use past simple. 
Now, this is an example of a recast she played, but also the used part simple is uh, an example of explicit correction, uh, because a lot of studies have been done into uh, providing feedback in oral and in text chat communication, and generally one problem with recasts on their own is they don't normally get noticed. Uh, uh, students think they're just echoing rather than actually correcting a mistake. So uh, this turned out to be the case also in text chat. So I, I, I devised this uh, form of recast so that there's more there's more uh, likelihood of students noticing the correct report of the feedback. Uh, because remember, you know, why do we give feedback to, to, to let the student know that the language they're using is incorrect and they need to adjust? Uh, so if you have a look also in the second one, uh, I've got what is there in your picture? There is two men playing football. So here you've got there are and then in brackets subject to agreement. So uh, yeah, so uh, so well, my studies showed uh, showed that the students generally noticed. Uh, Notice the correct course of this feedback. Now, how do you know that students have noticed? Well, normally they will, they will provide some uptake. Now, uptake could be uptake with repair, where they, they type their statement again, uh, but this time without a mistake, or it might just be uptake without repair, where they simply can say, oh, okay, thank you, and then they just move on. But the fact that they, their attention has been drawn to the mistake is it, just part of the learning process. and. And this extra visibility that TextChat provides uh, really makes it worthwhile and helps facilitate uh, greater learning. Uh, now, what, what can we do after the TextChat? Well, what, what I like to do is uh, once I finish the activity, I say, OK, students, uh, scroll. In, in the case of uh, today's meet, they will scroll down to have a look, uh, scroll up and down to have a look at the type of mistakes they're making. And then I'd say, okay, have a look at the times of have given you some feedback. What kind of mistakes are you making? And drop it down in your notebook. So then, uh, you know, and, and the benefit of this text chat is that you're not just giving one, 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 uh, one piece of feedback as you, as you walk around the room. You're, you're providing, you know, three, four, five, a, a lot of uh, feedback because uh, the slower turn taking and the fact that uh, you can see all of the screens at once enables you to really respond to, you know, uh, a lot more errors. Uh, so students could also share their, their chat scripts with other students and, and then they can compare. Are they making the same kind of mistakes or making different kinds of mistakes? Uh, student, teachers could also uh, cop, copy and paste the, uh, the, with the, the chat script, uh, the Today's Meet Windows onto a Word document and then they could uh, look at the errors and then use them for these analysis or maybe create a sentence gamble where you know the teacher writes up some sentences on the board and students have to decide whether they're wrong or right depending uh, and that will focus on the mistakes that they've uh, just witnessed in the text chat activity. So look, the most important thing, what do learners think about? So I, I, I do text chat in uh, a, lot, a lot of my classes, but also I, I uh, in the British Council of Singapore, we have like a My Club where students have this extra, uh, they, these optional classes, and I try to run uh, a text chat uh, activity at least uh, two or three times a month. Uh, and each time I always collect some feedback to see, you know, what, what they, what, how they found the task. So here we have some feedback. Uh, the thing I like most about the text chat task was the teacher will correct my mistakes, uh, that the teacher fix my mistakes on the spot. So here you can see students really respond positively to having their, their errors corrected uh, and the fact that they, they can see they see that this, this, the teacher is responding to them. So they're feeling that, they're, that you're really helping them. They're getting almost like uh, personal personalized feedback, uh, but yet in, in, in a large classroom environment. Uh, other 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 feedback included, uh, they like the fact that they can focus on spelling words and practice their grammar, uh, they can find interesting, uh, they find it interesting for their way of learning, so it's a different, it's something new that they're not used to doing in class, you know, usually they associate text chat with uh, just, you know, their own free time activities. Uh, I can say more words than speaking, so again, giving some confidence. Uh, also, I can review my sentence before I send the text, yes, yeah, so, you know, they can, uh, 
they can uh, uh, that slower turn taking allows them to think about. And also, if, if they're maybe uh, it, with a partner who's a bit slower, they can maybe prep up their sentences beforehand and have a, a, a double checking before they say. So, for more information, uh, you can check out my website. That's uh, www.markjoliver.co.uk or uh, my blog, textchatteacher.wordpress.com and you can follow me on Twitter at textchatteacher. Uh, also, uh, uh, so this my book, Text Chat Activities, uh, has uh, 30, 30 lessons uh, or 30 activities, uh, plus a little breakdown of how to use today's needs and, uh, and the benefits. So it's basically just going into more detail what I've what into today. Uh, and for today and tomorrow, it is free. So, yeah, get on to Amazon uh, and you can download it for free today and tomorrow. Uh, just go to my website. There are links to the book uh, on my website. Uh, so yeah, so if you're interested or you think you know someone who might be interested in this book, just uh, yeah, send, them, send them the link and then yeah, free all day today and tomorrow. So, now well, I think it's time for questions. So if anybody has any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Also, if you if you were in Vera's uh, uh, previous uh, presentation and interested in uh, in in reading, uh, I've got some graded readers uh, which I've written, and they're for, you can download them for, load them for free uh, at whatpad.com. So uh, I've written a graded reader for uh, elementary and uh, intermediate level. So if you're interested, you can they're free to download on whatpad.com. W a t t p a d dot com. So yeah, so you can check out if you're interested for your students. So let's have a look at these questions. Ah, so what, what kind of activities would I do for high level students? Uh, well, here I kind of like to do uh, a lot of jigsaw, jigsaw activities. So I might have students do uh, uh, jigsaw readings online, and then I get students using text chat to uh, ask each other questions about their text. Uh, also, you know, things like anything really with uh, an information gap. Uh, you know, you can, you know, just using same sort of ideas, but just at a higher level. Uh, and uh, yeah, you know, uh, oh, so you know, there's plenty of, uh, you know, plenty of ideas. I mean, the good thing about the C1, you can probably use authentic material. So for example, that activity where students have to decide where to go, uh, or maybe they, they can decide what movie to watch. So they have to go to internet movie database and then have a look at what movies are coming out, and they can have a little discussion. So they can really use the uh, authentic materials. Uh, let's have a little look. At uh, next one, what website do you use to create crossword puzzles? Uh, I usually just use, uh, oh, I, I just Google crossword maker and whatever comes up. I think it's an armored penguin. But what I normally do is a bit tricky half a crossword. Uh, so you kind of have to do it yourself and then fill it in yourself. I fill in one half on one and half on the other, and then I scan them and then I send them out. Uh, where can you download it? Just Amazon, basically. So yeah, uh, the books are for sale uh, on Amazon. Uh, but again, today and tomorrow is free. It's it's basically it's uh, it's an e so if it's on it's Kindle, so it's going to be a Mobi file. However, within the book, there's a link to a PDF file, so you can actually buy the ebook and then you can click on the link uh, and it'll take you to a PDF file, so you can print it off. Okay, any other questions there? Let me have a look. Well, how, frequently do I do, how frequently do I use these text chat activities? Well, yeah, generally every now and then. I mean, uh, I, I mean uh, they're not a replacement for, you know, communi spoken communicated tasks. But, uh, you know, once a month maybe, uh, you know, uh, just if I see an activity. I mean, it's quite good for the low levels when they, when they need some controlled practice. Uh, so, for example, you know, if you're doing very low levels where students have like four people and they have, you know, half of the names and half of the ages and half of their addresses and they have to ask each other about that. So those kind of uh, activities are really useful in text chat because it just gives them that extra time to formulate. So for the low levels, it's really useful. But again, you know, it's, uh, you know, any, any, basically any kind of speaking activity, you could just, you know, use in text chat. Just a bit of variety, but again, it's not a replacement for...
real open communication. Okay, is that, I think that, am I up? Is my time up? I'm looking at the clock. David? Has anyone uh, got I, any final questions for Mark? Any other questions for Mark? Okay, well, I'd like to say a very big thank you, Mark, for your talk today, especially for all of the practical ideas and sharing your experience as well as your insights from your master's um, research. So I think there's a lot of takeaways for the delegates today and very best of luck with everyone with trying out Mark's ideas. Thank you very much again, Mark. Well, thank you, David, and thank you, Christina, for letting me uh, talk to everyone today. And thank you all for joining the, the room. It's been fun. And uh, yeah, good, good luck with the text chatting. Thank you. Bye. Bye.